I've been reading all of your comments and I have something you've been asking for over and over again. Hello coders, my name is Carol and I'm a video software engineer at Canva, an Australian tech company that democratizes and simplifies design for everyone. In this video, I will tell you about my experience getting a job at Canva. I will cover those three areas. One, how did the recruitment process for a mid-level software engineering role look like, including the actual resume I submitted that also scored me jobs at Google and Microsoft? Two, what were the actual tasks and real questions I had to do as a part of this interview process? And three, what offer did I receive after successfully finishing the interview and how I negotiated to get even more? Make sure to stay until the end of this video to learn how you can maximize your chances of getting a job at Canva. Let's get to it. My journey with Canva started in November 2017, and that is when I had my job interview. But what I'm about to tell you is still very much relevant and can give you a better idea of what to expect when applying for technical positions at Canva. Bear in mind that the interview questions changed a couple of times since I first applied and the whole process got updated. More on that at the end of this video, so make sure to keep watching. In November 2017, I got contacted via LinkedIn by one of Canva internal recruiters, Diana. Diana did a great job at convincing me to apply for a role at Canva. I mean, I applied. While having a signed contract with Microsoft that I was supposed to join full-time in just two months. My first chat with Diana was just an overview of what Canva has to offer and what my role would be. The role I was meant to apply for was a mid-level Android engineer. At the time of my recruitment, Canva neither released their Android app, nor was it recognized as a unicorn, which is a startup valued at $1 billion. These three things made me really interested in joining Canva. One, the early stage at which Canva was at that moment. Two, design being the domain of Canva as a product. Three, certainty that I will be working on the core features of the Android app. If you want to see a little bit more detailed reasoning behind me choosing Canva over Microsoft, check out this video. You can find a link to it up here in the corner and in the description below. Now, let's take a step back and look at my CV from that time. My LinkedIn profile, which is how Diana found me, was pretty much a perfect reflection of what was in my resume. And for that reason, I think it can be beneficial to look at it and try to establish which parts of my experience helped me get noticed by Canva. The first significant thing that you can notice is my education. I have bachelor and master degree in computer science from University of Warsaw, which at least in Europe is recognized as one of those that produce the best well-rounded software engineers. Degree from a good university definitely helps recruiters adjust their expectations towards the level at which you would be able to perform at the job. If you want to know specifically what skills both of my degrees equip me with, you can check those two videos. As usual, links in the description below. The second big thing is my work experience. There are three features of my work experience that are attractive for potential employers. One, I've been working in mobile software engineering roles nearly since the beginning of my higher education. At the time of my first contact with Canva in 2017, it meant over four years of related commercial experience. Two, I worked in the same company for extended periods of time two and a half years in one case and full year in another. For potential employers, it means that they might hope for me to stay longer and therefore bring more value to the company as onboarding new engineers is costly. I completed two internships at Microsoft. This meant two things. One, I was able to get into big tech, which required a certain level of skill. And two, they were happy with me as they hired me again the following year. In terms of projects, I had them listed in a slightly different way on my LinkedIn profile than in this resume. Projects developed under a center company lived in the description of that work experience. My side projects or projects developed for the purpose of my thesis lived in a dedicated project section. The most important part of that was that it showcased different applications of my mobile skills as a mobile engineer. It also pointed at the fact that I released some of the apps independently, meaning I'm familiar with the whole process of creating and releasing a mobile application. The last part is specific skills and technologies. I know for a fact, as Diana mentioned this to me during our chat, that she noticed my profile because I listed Android development and Rx Java as my skills. As a side note, please don't do what I did in the CV and list way too many irrelevant skills especially if you don't feel strong about them. 
also don't rank yourself like this it's cringe if i was to receive a cv like this now for someone who is applying for an android role i would probably be quite unhappy having to scan for all this bs just so i can filter for the android specific skills tailor your resume to the position you are applying for shortly after i decided to apply for canva i received a challenge canva challenge is a small project you can complete at your own pace within a week or two but the advice total time spent is three to five hours the challenge is supposed to test your knowledge and skills in a given domain the challenge i took was an android app that had the following requirements implement a photo mosaic android app that allows users to pick a local image then divide that image into 32 by 32 pixel tiles find an average color for each tile fetch a new tile for that color from the provided server compose the results into a photo mosaic of the original image they also specify some constraints tiles should be rendered a complete row at a time the mosaic should be rendered from top to bottom the app should make effective use of parallelism and asynchrony do not use third-party apps that directly solve the task for you make the ui responsive while loading the mosaic my solution was based on three decisions related to the choice of architecture assuring testability and approach to parallelizing the execution. First, for the architecture, I decided to use MVP pattern to split UI from business logic. MVP stands for Model View Presenter, and it's a popular platform-independent architectural pattern. As for testability, I decided to use simple dependency injection without taking advantage of any libraries, as the project was too small to justify using one. Lastly, I chose to use RxJava to asynchronously split the image into tiles, calculate the average color, and then fetch the graphics from the server. The biggest challenge in this part was to keep the correct order of tiles when assembling the final image while optimizing the performance and taking advantage of multiprocessing. The engineers grading my challenge were happy with it. I received some feedback and progress to the final interview round. One more thing I want to tell you before we get there is that Canva no longer gives assignments like this challenge. The interview process includes a phone screen instead, which is much more time efficient for both the candidate and the interviewer. So have a look at the description below. I dropped a link to my GitHub repository with the solution to this challenge. Only modify so that it runs on the latest Android. And also let me know if you'd like me to make a dedicated video on how to solve this challenge step by step. Maybe using some more modern Android libraries and Kotlin instead of Java. So if you'd like to see that, leave a comment. And if many of you want to see that, I will make that video. The next stage is called final interview and consists of two one and a half hour long interviews, each with two Canva Android engineers. The first one is UI UX centric and the second one tests your knowledge about architecture and testing. Because of the time difference between Poland and Australia, I took my interviews 5 a.m. two days in a row, both times wearing my PJs. So if people ask me, does what you wear to the interviews matter? I say, not really, not from my experience. In this stage of the interviews, I had to continue working on my challenge app, refactoring or extending its functionality. The UI UX part came first, and it was definitely one that I was more afraid of. I got into some trouble not being able to run my app, even though I made sure it was working the day before. Uh, one of the interviewers, Ellie, was super helpful and actually helped me debug my app so that I can get up to speed and start answering the questions. This gesture was so nice and made me want to work at Canva even more. Instead of immediately failing me as a candidate, she made all the effort possible to make sure I can be successful. Being able to work with people like Ellie is what eventually made me a much, much better software engineer. The initial crisis was averted in a couple of minutes, but it stressed me out so much that now I barely remember what I had to do in this part of the interview. If I recall correctly, I had to adjust the UI to work in landscape or tablet mode and add some more functionality. Even though I managed to answer all the questions and implement all the tasks I was given in this interview, I felt like I failed because of my initial issue. So it was a huge surprise when the next day, right before the architecture interview, Diana, the recruiter that was supervising my whole process, told me that I got green light from the UI team. That gave me a huge boost of confidence because I felt much stronger about architecture. So 
if my in my opinion week performance was satisfactory i couldn't fail the upcoming interview. In this round, we started by discussing my architecture choice. The recruiters obviously saw my separation of the UI and business logic, but wanted to know if I fully understood why this was important. They also wanted me to explain why I picked MVP over MVVM or MVI, which are other architectural patterns uh, popular among Android engineers. We then discussed the way in which I parallelized my solution, take, talking about the specific Arch Java operator and transform choice I made, along with the number of threads I assigned to the pool, leading to some conversation about the hardware concerns. After that, I had some time to improve my solution based on what we talked about. Then we moved toward dependency injection, where I explained my choice of not using any library and suggested that I would use Dagger if the app was more complex. The recruiters wanted me to explain why DI is important and how I could make use of it. This naturally progressed towards the topic of testing. For those of you not familiar with dependency injection, it's mostly used to simplify testing by being able to test a single component by injecting it with stop predictable implementation of its dependencies. I honestly admitted here that I didn't have much experience with writing tests. But I think that recruiters were happy observing my learning process as they also gave me a green light as a hire. Another side note here, the interview also changed, kind of. As you remember from my previous interruption, uh, the challenge does not exist anymore, so it's impossible to extend its functionality. The general idea of testing UI, UX and architectural knowledge still stands, but there is some more on-the-go implementation. Another addition to this interview process is a value interview. It's just a behavioral interview checking how much your values align with those of Canva. Canva values are be a force for good, empower others, pursue excellence, be a good human, make complex things simple, set crazy big goals. To read more about them, you can visit canva.com slash career slash why dash Canva. I get a response about my performance during the interview within 48 hours. The congratulations email stated the role for which I was offered a position, Android engineer, the base salary, 115,000 Australian dollars, share options, quantity, and relocation budget of 10,000 Australian dollars. Don't get me wrong, I was already extremely happy with my offer. However, in my opinion, you should always negotiate, especially if you have another offer on the table. I was okay with my base salary, but wanted more share options, as I believe that Canva had a huge potential for growth in the upcoming years. Bringing up my Microsoft share package as a comparison, I asked if there is any room for adjustment. I could hear the reply that unfortunately they are not able to give me more options, but they can increase my base salary by $5,000, which comes down to $120,000 a year. Now, you might wonder, how does all of this help you getting a software engineering job at Canva? Before I get into that, please bear in mind, I'm just speaking from my experience and I don't say any of this on behalf of Canva. Everything I mentioned here is either my personal experience, my observations and judgment or common knowledge and public information. Now that we established this, I hope that after watching this video until this point, you have a better idea of what Canva did in the past in terms of interviewing and what were some things that Canva found valuable in me as a software engineer. Obviously everyone is different and Canva is hung for many tech stacks and experience levels independently of your formal education status. I don't want to give you generic interview advice, but those would definitely apply here. Things like explain your solution before you start implementing, consider edge cases, use an iterative approach when constructing a solution. All of that is great and you can find it on many other channels. So instead, I will tell you what I noticed Canva values very highly and give you three action items to follow up on to make sure you're ready to start the interview process. Make sure to watch until the end because the last one might surprise you. One. Start with browsing the open positions on canva.com slash careers slash jobs. On the left side, you can narrow down your selection to, for example, engineering frontend. You can also pick the location and employment type. Once you find job opening that sound about right, click on that and check the details page. Make sure you have skills necessary to perform the responsibilities listed and that you satisfy the requirements. If you don't, this is a great preparation list for you to go over in the upcoming weeks. Another great resource 
is canva.com slash career slash engineering dash interview. That goes more into the details of what to expect and how to prepare, including some books you might want to read. Two. The second part of making sure you are successful in your interview is to learn how to receive and act on feedback. Interviewers want you to succeed. Think about it. They spend a whole hour with you, an hour they could spend coding. <laughs> and trust me, 99.9% .9 of people would rather code than talk to strangers on Zoom. So when they give you feedback or suggestions, consider them. And even if you reject them, explain why. This shows that you are able to work in a team and you want to learn and grow as a software engineer. Three, the last part is something many people don't know about or don't want to do. Referrals. Referral means someone that already works in the company recommends you for a specific role. The benefit of being referred is that your resume will almost certainly be looked at and considered earlier than without being referred. The reason behind this is that the recruiter scanning the CVs and recommending people for the actual interview has more certainty that you can actually make it. It's not only the CV they are looking at, but also the fact that another employee was ready to vouch for you. The strongest recommendations are from people who you actually worked with in the past. So here you have it. In this video, you learned about my Canva interview experience and three tips that can help you in being successful when interviewing for a software engineering role. If you found this video useful, a like would be amazing. If the topic of software engineering and career in tech is your thing, subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss any of my future uploads. Bye!